Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my DVD slash Blu-ray shelf by shelf overview. Uh, this is uh, part or shelf 22, I believe, which is going to be the entire Blue Underground collection. Well, not the entire Blue Round, but my collection. So, uh, but which is very close. Um, with the exception of the Blu-rays and stuff, but we'll get there. Uh, so let's get right into this here, man. Um, we got uh, the tenth victim uh, with Ursula Anders, man. Oh man, she is so freaking beautiful, man. And Marcello Masteroni. Um, this is a cool film, man. You know, this one definitely inspired a lot of films after it and stuff. Basically, they they play assassins that are forced to you know fight against each other in this. Um, where murder is legalized and shit. So it's kind of one of those type of films. In a sense, like a surviving the game, even though that's illegal, but this is cool shit, man. Really good idea. I love 10th Victim. Good stuff. Next up here, we got 99 Women, directed by Jess Franco. This is the X-rated French version. Version I know this is on Blu-ray now, too, which I'm not going to upgrade, because why does this movie need to be on Blu-ray? I don't know. I really don't. Uh, it's a women in prison film, and Jess Franco made a bunch of these films, which we'll get to here in a few minutes. But it is essentially a women in prison film. If you want to read the synopsis, these films are pretty much all the same. They do have some twists and turns, and but you know they're sleaze bag films. Lots of lots of uh, lesbian sex and you know violence and shit. Actually, not bad. It's actually not bad. I don't mind 99 Women. It's pretty good for what it is. Uh, next up here, we have the Alan Clark Collection, um, which is just a phenomenal box set by Blue Underground here. The films that are on here, we've got, actually, which is really cool, man. Um, we've got two versions of Scum. We've got the original version, and then uh, Alan Clark actually remade it. Um, in 1979, both starring Ray Winstone. Both are fantastic. They do have a lot of differences, but man, if you've never seen Scum before, you got to check out both versions, man. They're just fantastic. Um, yeah, both juvenile prison systems and shit. It's just fucking fantastic. Uh, Made in Britain is another great one where he plays a skinhead, and it's kind of a kind of a character piece about him. It's just fantastic. The Firm is a really another great film uh, with Gary Oldman, just shot fantastically acted brilliantly. Uh, Elephant, which was actually produced by Danny Boyle, um, I think it might be based on true events, the separatist, separatist killings in Northern Ireland. I'm not 100% sure. It's been a while since I've seen that one. And um, there's also a documentary on here, which is very informative about Alan Clark. So, uh, But these films, you know, although not being horror films, are just fantastically made films. You gotta check these out, man. Tim Roth, fuck. Just... He's so damn good in Made in Britain. Oh, it's like ridiculous. So, yeah. Amazon Jail from the director of Bear Behind Bars, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, another <laughs> women in prison film. That's what it is, man. It's just sleazebag shit. These movies crack me. I'm a big fan of women in prison films or just prison-based films in general. These ones are just beyond sleazy, though, man. They're so fucking sleazy. Sorry about the glare, guys. There's nothing I can do about it. But yeah, you're into women in prison films, Amazon Jail. It's not bad. It's okay. Uh, Anguish, uh, Spanish Giallo. It's kind of like a movie inside a movie. Um, this is, I love this movie, man. It's so great. It's so great. I love the, well, I shouldn't say I love the eye part on this, but you know, you know me with eye mutilation and shit, it just really gets on my, gets underneath my skin. So, um, but yeah. Anguish, man. I highly recommend Anguish. Great film. Uh, then we got Autopsy, man, with uh, Misty Farmer. This is a fantastic giallo, man. Really, really good stuff. Um, a twisted, unconventional giallo. It is true, man. It's a very unique one. Very, very cool story. You can pause it there if you want to read the synopsis. But I highly recommend this one, man. It's got it's beautifully shot. It's got a cool story, man. Really, really cool story. Check out Autopsy. Look at that cover art. It's fantastic. Uh, then we got Baby Yaga. This is a, you know, like a lesbian type vampire, very stylish, artsy vampire type film. About this one vampire takes another one under her spell kind of thing. It's very slow going. It's a very erotic vampire type film. Not for everybody. Um, I don't mind it. It's okay. It's not my favorite film of this 
subgenre of vampire films. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's okay. Uh, getting into one of the most unique films like I've ever seen before, Bad Boy Bubby. Uh, this is a exploitation film, basically about this character Bubby, who has grown up in pure isolation. He's been locked away by his by his mother, uh, grown up in like a small room, and he's really had no he's had no experience with the outside world. And he's you know he's semi he's slow he's kind of retarded. And uh, one day he escapes into the real world, in the world and then that's when the movie kind of takes flight. Uh, it's a very interesting and odd film, man. Like, th there's parts in this film where you can't help but laugh, but like, I don't know if you should be laughing at them, <laughs> I don't know. But it's a very sick and kind of twisted film all around. Great performance though, man. The performance by um, the guy that plays Bubby is just phenomenal. It really is, man. It's definitely one of a kind. There's no other films like this. So if you've never seen Bad Boy Bubby, give it a shot, man. It's something unique and something fresh anyways. Very controversial because based on the content of it. Here we go with Bear Behind Bars, another uh, women in prison film. Um, <laughs> I remember <clears throat> my boy Dylan came over one day with a copy of this and he's like, well, I watched it once. You can give it away on the show. <laughs> These are the type of films that are not for everybody. I understand. Um... You know, they kind of are, man, once, you know, they're they're good for a watch once in a blue moon. If you're really feeling frisky, man, have a marathon of these uh, women in prison films. I don't know, man. You might have to mix it up with some of the Roger Corman ones because they're they're actually a little bit better. These ones are pretty fucking sleazy. <clears throat> but yeah, next up here, we got The Big Racket, uh, filmed by Enzo G. Casarelli, starring Fabio Testi. This is fucking awesome. I love this film, man. Euro crime. Uh, very, very action-filled. Great performance with F Fabio Testi. Um, yeah, there's the synopsis if you want to. And we'll also get into Revolver and Contraband very, very soon here. But yeah, you know, it's a Euro crime film, man. You know what to expect from that. Awesome. Absolutely love that film. Uh, the Bird with the Crystal Plumage. We all know this one. Just got amazing treatment from Arrow on Blu-ray once again. Arrow's re-upped version of it. This is the two-disc um, special edition. Um, one of my favorite Argentos, man. I love this Giallo. It's really fantastically shot and um, executed. I think the story is brilliant in this one. Um, you know, again, not for everybody. I know a lot of people kind of harp on this one a little bit. But, you know, it is what it is, man. That's kind of what you get with Giallos, I guess. So... The Case of the Bloody Iris, another fantastic Chihalo starring Edward Fennick. George Hilton, Edward, Edward Fennick, man. She's, you know, I think she's one of the, if not the most beautiful girl ever to face, to live on this planet. It's just fantastic. There's a synopsis. I'm really not trying to get into synopsis or many reviews of these because there's so many films to get through. So you guys can judge the cover by yourself and... You know, if you want to check it out, check it out. But I highly recommend The Case of Bloody Iris. This is fantastic stuff. Fennec is awesome in it. Uh, then we get to Lucio Falci's The Black Cat, which I have so many editions of this movie. It's ridiculous. Um, probably one of the most used stories by Edgar Allan Poe. It, it, that story has been adapted so many times to film throughout the years. Uh, Fulci, you know, being my favorite director and all, this is not my favorite version of The Black Cat. But, you know, this one actually grew on me over years, man. I, I, I didn't like this one when I first saw it, but, you know, it grew on me. But, yeah, you know, The Black Cat, we all know the story. Um, but, yeah, another fantastic giallo. The Black Belly of the Tarantula. This one is just fantastic with Barbara Bach, the one-time Bond girl. Um, yeah, this one right here, it's just, it's got such a unique storyline to it, too. You guys can see that right there. And pause that right there. I love this, man. Beautiful women with the poison of a rare wasp paralyzing them and forcing them to witness their own brutal murders. I mean, does that not sound amazing? This movie's awesome. Really, really good. Next up here, we got Lamberto Bava's A Blade in the Dark. Um... Yeah, Giallo slasher film, basically about a dude that is uh, working on sound on this film, and then these murders start happening. Um, good stuff, man. Love the soundtrack. Got some pretty good kills. I'm a big fan of Blade in the Dark. Check it out from 1983. This is a later Giallo slash 
slasher, I guess. It's, yeah. And then next up here, man, we got the uh, Blind Dead collection, which consists of Tomb of the Blind Dead, Return of the, Return of the Evil Dead, The Ghost Galleon, and of course, Night of the Seagulls, which is getting a Blu-ray release from Screen Factory. They're releasing the fourth film in a quadrilogy. Isn't that interesting? So Tombs of the Blind Dead, uh, dealing with the, uh, the, um, the Templars, which is a very cool idea, actually, man, because they, uh, they hunt, you know, these things come alive, you know, these, you know, these Templars come alive, but their eyes have been pecked out by, you know, crows and stuff like that, so they basically hunt by sound. So I like the premise of this, man, it's very, very creepy, it's cool, uh, it's got awesome music, man, it's shot beautifully, it's got great atmosphere. Yeah, the Knights Templar, Executed Horseman. Yeah, fantastic stuff, man. I really like this movie. And then we got the sequel, uh, Return of the Evil Dead, which I've actually had people ask me if this was like a an unofficial sequel to the Evil Dead. I'm like, not even close. <laughs> no, this movie was done way before the Evil Dead came out. 1973, for the people that are wondering. Um, but yeah, more of the same, you know, Knights Templar. Yeah, shot beautifully. Love the sequel, man. Return Evil Dead. Good stuff. And now, if you guys listen to the podcast, I have a running joke on there. I love movies that are set on boats and stuff. And oddly enough, this one right here, the Ghost Galleon, the third one in the Blind Dead trilogy, is actually set on a boat, but this is my least favorite of the four. Go figure. Um, I think this one had a lot of potential, but uh, it, just, it, it just wasn't executed to my liking. Um... But still not a bad film. It's not like I dislike it. It's just, it's my least favorite of the four. And then we got the uh, Night of the Seagulls, which I really enjoy. This is a good one. Actually, kind of a little bit different, but very, very nice. I think it's very cool that, you know, it's something that hasn't been explored a whole lot in horror is using the Knights Templar, um, which it's actually kind of cool. You know, you think that would get explored a little bit more because they're kind of an interesting group of people from back in the day. Um... And then we got a documentary on Amando Di Asario. Uh, this is really good stuff right here too. Very informative. And that's the cool thing you get in the box set right there because you get that documentary. You can get all these things separately. But So I guess I'll try not to kick over the rest of my coffee here. Um, <laughs> anyways, moving along here. We got the Blood Splatter Bride that just got a Blu-ray release from... Mondo Macabro. This has got such a great setting. I love the atmosphere and setting of this film. Uh, Storyline's very, you know, simple. There it is right there if you guys want to pause that. But, um, yeah, this is a very, very atmospheric film. I really highly recommend that one, too. Good stuff. The Bloodstained Shadow. Yeah. Another great one. Um, that's right. You know... Capolo I don't know, I can't say that shit right there. There's the uh, synopsis. Yeah, this is. I, I really enjoyed this one too, man. Another great release. Ah, oh, here's one, man. I absolutely love, man. <laughs> so good. Claude Skinsky and a bullet for the general. Uh, spaghetti Western. Um, man, this thing's got some great action in it. Got some great violence and shit. Claude Skinsky, man, in Westerns. Yeah, it's one of the greatest spaghetti westerns ever made. You know, I can't really dispute it. It's very, very fun, but Klaus Kinsey fucking so good in this. And then we got uh, Jess Franco's Cannibals. Um, you know, Jess Franco was not a big fan of the, the cannibal genre. He's been on record saying that. He was actually kind of forced into making this and a couple other cannibal films. And he, you know, he can tell he didn't put his heart into these movies because they were not that good. In fact, he hated these things. Um, he hated the genre. He hated his movies that he made. But he made them for the paychecks. And then we get these nice editions of them. <laughs> uh, this one right here is very run-of-the-mill. You can tell. Pretty much like all of Jess Franco's cannibal films. They were just, like I said, they were not, not his forte. But yeah, this one right here, we've seen this kind of storyline before but um you know for what it is it's not like <laughs> it's not the worst thing in the world it does have some good gore just put it that way i mean if you're gonna watch these things for any reason it's for the gore i mean joe bob briggs he uh he gives a thumbs up on it a 97 on the vomit meter that's an awesome quote a 97 i love that cannibal man uh another video nasty along with cannibals i think was on there too 
This movie right here isn't exactly what you think it is. It's not like a straight up cannibal film. It's got a kind of a unique storyline. It's kind of slower. It's odd. It's more of a character study. Um, feels like a thriller. Very reminiscent of Polanski's Repulsion. I don't know about that, but um, yeah, this isn't. This one's a little bit deceiving. It's kind of. It's strange. It's a strange one, but yeah, it's all right for what it is. Uh, David Carradine in Cannonball, Car Flick. Yep, that's what you're gonna get there. The Car Crash cult classic from the director Eating Raccoon and Death Race 2000. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly what it is. Yep. I actually really enjoy this film, man. David Carradine, always did good stuff, man. Always did good stuff. Uh, Mikel Suave's The Church. Yeah. I absolutely love The Church, man. Fantastic. Actually, coming out on Blu-ray. I never did grab the Shameless Blu-ray, so it's kind of interesting to get into Region 1, but uh, I think I'll be grabbing that. You know, it's it's cool, man. I love the setting of this. Um, the story's pretty interesting, too. You know, the whole... And the execution. I, I'm a big fan of the church, man. I mean, I like these kind of religious type theme films. I don't know. Even though I'm not very religious myself at all. But I do like them. They're interesting. Uh, the Cat of Nine Tales. Um, yeah, what can I say, man? This one's just getting an Arrow, fantastic Arrow Blu-ray release, which should be shipping soon, I guess. Um, not my favorite Argento in the world, but it's still a fun film. Another one that we covered on the podcast. Seen this one multiple times. It's a decent, it's a decent giallo, not one of Argento's top shelf ones though, but still highly recommend it. Still really good. Uh, then we got Celia, another Jess Franco film. This is just like pure smut. <laughs> Here's the storyline. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's pure, it's just pure smut. That's basically what it is. Not for everybody. Not even for really for myself. I don't really care for it, to be honest. Uh, Contamination by Luigi Cozy, man. Alien ripoff. <laughs> the exploding pods in this. <laughs> or the exploding eggs, I should say, or whatever. <laughs> Fuck. This thing's gory. It's fun. It's stupid. It's such a ripoff, but it's so much fun. And Arrow did a great job with their Blu-ray of this, man. It looks fantastic. But such a fun sci-fi alien ripoff. It's good stuff, man. Uh, next up here, we got the Christopher Lee collection, which uh, consists of The Blood of Fu Manchu, The Castle of Fu Manchu, Circus of Fear, and The Bloody Judge. This one was actually limited to 2500 You know, these things, it, it's weird. I always used to see these around, even years after they were apparently out of print, because this was like an earlier um, release from Blue Underground. Like, I think this one came out... Yeah, this one, it says 2003 this thing came out. I, I still saw these things even till like last year on the shelves. So, I don't know, man. People just didn't buy into them. Uh, without pulling out the discs, these are all the cover arts on there, which is kind of handy. Blood of Fu Manchu, Christopher Lee playing a Chinese. Look at him. He looks Chinese. It's fucking crazy. Circus of Fear and the Bloody Judge. Man, these are all fun films. These are all fun. Good stuff. If I can get this back in here. Oh, look at that. Slides in like a glove. All right. Circle of Iron. Another David Carradine film. This one right here, uh, I think originally was supposed to be starring Bruce Lee because Bruce Lee actually wrote the story for this film. And I believe it was going to be starring himself. Obviously, Bruce Lee passed away. Dave, David Carradine got the, uh, the nod for this. I think that's how the story goes anyways. But... Uh, Circle of Iron, cool, uh, you know, martial arts film. I actually really like this one. But yeah, you know, this is how... Yeah, David Carradine did a lot of this stuff, man. Good stuff. And we got Full Cheese City of the Living Dead. Just another edition of the film, the DVD. Um, like, I love this cover, man. It's fantastic. Great, great film. No, when I first watched this film back in the day, man, I could not get over the uh, the puking scene. That scene just, <laughs> like, how long it goes on for is so ridiculous, but uh, I love it, man. I've used I've used that clip in videos before, um, but such an atmospheric. The soundtrack's, like, one of, the, my, one of my most favorite soundtracks of all time, but great gore film. I know a lot of people have problems with the ending, which I know in production the ending actually had problems, so that's why it feels very clunky and out of, out of place and stuff, but... Yeah, the first one in the Gates of Hell trilogy. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Companeros with Franco Nero, Thomas Milan, and Jack Palance. Look at that fucking cast. And <laughs> look 
look at Thomas Milan. He plays a Mexican in this film. <laughs> he fucking looks like he's, he looks like he's Mexican. It's insane. Uh, Sergio Capucci, then. This dude is like the fucking front runner in Spaghetti Westerns. You know, if Corbucci's name's on a film, then you need to check it out if you're a fan of Westerns because you know this shit's going to be fantastic. The shot, just everything about his films are fantastic, but this one's just great. I know this one has a Blu-ray release too, which I should actually grab one day because I really like that one. Uh, Contraband, Lucio Fulci, Euro crime film. Uh, ultra gory. <laughs> There's actually, I think, yeah, there is a screenshot on the back. This scene right here, it gets messy. Put it that way. Yeah, so if you like your Euro crime, man, Lucio Fulci doing Euro crime. You know, Fulci, like a lot of Italian directors dipped into all type of genres because that's what the studios made them do. They made them make westerns and they made them make crime films and horror and, you know, so on and so on. So, but I'm glad though that we got films like this because, you know, Fulci's known for his, you know, his gore horror films and not for his Euro crime and his spaghetti westerns, but he made some good ones. Contraband's no exception, it's a great film. Speaking of oddity Lucio Fulci films, here's Conquest. A kind of sword and sorcery, very gory, ultra atmospheric film. <laughs> like, Conquest is fantastic. Uh, this is one that I really wish would get a Blu-ray because I would buy it because I love to see what this one looks like on Blu-ray. Um, it, it's just such a great film, man. Oh, here we go. Fulci is a master blood-soaked horror fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, sword and sorcery, fantasy, whatever you want to call it. Fulci style, man. Fulci style. You can't go wrong with that shit. Um, Romero's The Crazies. Um, yeah, it's great, man. I'm a big fan of this movie. You know, infection film. Good stuff. We all know The Crazies, man. It's very, it's very Romero. You know, it has that Romero feel to it. Uh, Daughters of Darkness. Yes. Um, very, very stylish vampire film. Um, very gothic feeling. Here's the synopsis of it. I love, I love this movie. I, I really, really enjoy Daughters of Darkness. I highly recommend this one. Um, when this one? Yeah, this is like an early, yeah, early 70s. 1971. Yep. You know, it's one of the, another one of those erotic vampire type things, but very cool. I, I love that movie. It's got a cool story. And then we got uh, Dead and Buried. Speaking of cool stories, man. Um, Dead and Buried, just fantastic. Don't really want to say too much about it if you've never seen it, but ultra atmospheric film. Very strange, but it does come together. You know, it actually comes together and it's very, very interesting. It's a very interesting film. I love it. So that is the limited edition two disc version here's the just the standard one which i had picked up first and i grabbed the uh the two disc one for actually like basically nothing i found it for uber cheap so i was like well i've got to grab that uh moving along here we got um death dream bob clark's awesome um you know film about of somebody coming back from vietnam that may or may not be alive. Very interesting film, gets so much subtext. The social commentary in this film is fantastic. It's really, really well done, man. I think Bob Clark knocked this one out of the fucking park. Just got a Blu-ray release, fantastic stuff. Um, check it out if you've never seen it, man. It's great stuff. And then we got Argento's Deep Red, just the DVD version of many, many editions of this movie. Uh, this is my favorite Dario Argento film now. You know, my taste has changed over the years. Forever it was Suspiria. Um, but, you know, in the last couple of years, man, just after watching Deep Red so many times and, you know, just actually rewatching pretty much all of Argento's films because if you guys are fans of the podcast, we do an Italian month in November and we've been covering Argento films the last three years um, because JP wants to. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, you know, just rewatching Deep Red again, I just. I fully appreciated how brilliant this film is. It's by far, it's so well made. The story is amazing. I think it's brilliant. 10 out of 10. One of the greatest giallos ever. Uh, Delirium. This is a fucking weird one, man. No, this is not Lamberto Bava's Delirium. Uh, there's actually like three films named Delirium. One of them is actually a video nasty that doesn't ever release, but this is fucking weird, man. This is very psychological, strange, strange film. It's been a while since I've seen this one. I'd have to rewatch, but I just remember this one being so fucking odd. But yeah, it's got two different cuts on here, and it's so crazy. 
This international version, 102 minutes, American cut version, 86. They cut out 16 minutes of that. Isn't that fucked? 16 minutes is like a lot of film, man. It's nuts. But yeah, that's a weird one. I gotta rewatch that one sometime. Franco Nero, and of course, Django by the master, Sergio Cabucci. It's classic, man. It's just so damn good. It's got so many iconic scenes. The soundtrack's fucking amazing. Um, yeah, man. It's just so damn good. Django. Yeah, we all know Django. It inspired so many you know, not legit sequels. <laughs> There's like a million Django films. Django Kill, I believe, is the only legit sequel. I think this is the only legit one with Thomas Milan. Uh, and then all the other ones are just unofficial, which I swear there's like 30 Django films at least, including Tarantino's, I guess. Um, but yeah, another really, you know, enjoyable film, man. Django Kill, awesome stuff. Very violent, very fun. Thomas Milan is fucking great in this film too, man. I love Thomas Milan. He was such a great actor. Uh, another Fulci film, Don't Torture a Duckling, which just got the Arrow treatment. Uh, the Arrow Blu-ray looks just fantastic, by the way. This is interesting cover art on this. Um, but yeah, you know, again, this is a very, very daring film, you know, to do. Even for the times, I mean, when did this movie come in? 1972, you're dealing with some very extreme stuff, like pedophilia and murder and... And just, uh, it's just, it's got a lot of uh, social commentary going on here. It's interesting that this film actually came out, you know, another one with Thomas Milan. Thomas Milan is just the man. But yeah. Don't Torture a Doc Man, fantastic film. Emmanuel in America. <laughs> um, yeah, it's an Emmanuel film, man. It's an Emmanuel film, plays a photographer. I mean, it's basically the same storyline in every film. Turns into very smutty stuff from Joe D'Amato. Um, it's got a girl sucking a horse's cock in it. I mean, what, what else could you ask for, man? It's an Emmanuel film. Not for everybody, very smutty. I actually really like this film, though. Um, not because of the horse cock sucking, but you know what I mean. It's, it's a fun exploitation film. It is what it is. Uh, Eugene, another Jess Franco smutty film. I mean, look at this cover. You know what you're getting yourself into with this one. Um, yeah, man. Christopher Lee in this film plays like this... It's kind of a... I don't know. I, want, I don't want to say dominatrix. I think it's just a woman's title, but... Sinister Dolomans. Yeah. And that's what he does. It's a very sexual, orientated, perverse type film. Yeah. it's It's an interesting role for... Christopher Lee, you don't see him doing roles like that, so if you want to check out Christopher Lee in a very oddball role, check out that. Uh, Cronenberg's Fast Company, um, you know, racing film with John Saxon. Uh, this is a cool addition because it actually comes with his bonus film, Stereo and uh, Crime of the Future, which I know have been released by uh, Arrow on Blu-ray also too, but Fast Company, a very interesting Cronenberg film because, you know, he's mostly known for doing body horror films and having very unique type films. This is very kind of run-of-the-mill, but fun. I, I really enjoy this film, man. Good stuff, man. Fast Company. Uh, the Fifth Chord with the man Franco Nero, a great, great Awesome Giallo. Like, the fifth quarter. This is one that really does not get talked about a lot. I don't know why. Maybe because people think it's an action film. I actually, I think I heard... I, I Someone commented one time in one of my videos and asked me if this was an action film. So maybe that's what it is. I come to think of it. I don't know. Maybe because it just kind of looks like one. But not really, I guess. I mean, that image right there just screams Giallo. But, I don't know. But yeah, here's the storyline. Really good. Highly recommend the fifth chord. I love it. Uh, the <laughs> the final countdown uh, with Kirk Douglas, Martin Sheen, James Ferentino. This is this is an interesting film. It's like a it's like a PG kind of time warp type film about um, the sh they get transported back in time into 1941 from this like electrical. I think it's like a you know um, lightning storm. And it takes them into the days before the attack on Pearl Harbor. Yeah, there it is. So now they're trying to change the course of history because this was taking place in present time and they know what happens. So now they're trying to prevent that and change history. It's, it's a pretty interesting film, actually. You know, cool fantasy time warp type film. I liked it. Show that one to the kids, I guess. 
Uh, and here's one that you can't show to the kids. <laughs> William Sanderson, Robert Judd, and Fight for Your Life. Another video nasty for actually good reasons. I mean, if there's ever going to be a film and that's going to be on a video nasty list, it's probably this one. This one is probably the most racist film ever made. Uh, it, it's insane. William Sanderson, you know, plays a criminal, escape from jail with, with a few of his buddies, and they invade this uh, this house, um, Robert Judd's house. And his fam and they take his family hostage and they just fuck with him. It has some of the worst, like, racial insults ever. I mean, the N-word is used so many times in this film. It's just, and it just, it's brutal, man. It's so brutal. But an amazing film. It's so well done. Like, William Sanderson, this is his magnum opus right here, man. Fuck. I love Fight for Your Life. Check it out if you've never seen it before. It's awesome. For the Apocalypse. Now, another Fulci film. Western style. So for the apocalypse, I mean, it has it has a pretty decent, it has some pretty decent gory moments and stuff. But um, yeah, I, I love this film, man. For the apocalypse, well shot. You know, the locations are fantastic. I wish Fulci had it done more. Actually, I wish Masker Time would get its uh, a good release because that one has like a really budget DVD release that I have, and it's it looks shitty, man. But at least this one looks good. So I mean, you're end of. Fulci and, you know, Spaghetti Westerns and stuff, man. You gotta check out this one. Michael J. Pollard. Fucking phenomenal in the film. Good stuff. I don't know why. These things are getting tight in here. It's strange. The Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion. Now, if that is not one of the greatest Giallo titles of all time, I don't really know what it is. A spicy Giallo. Yep, this is a good one. I actually really enjoy this one, too. Um... Yeah, there's a storyline for it. Good stuff. <laughs> I mean, you have to you have to check out if you're a fan of Giallo's, you've never seen this. You have to check it out just based on that title. So so awesome. Uh, the girl from Rio, another Jess Franco film. <laughs> this one right here is just it's ridiculous. The storyline's so ridiculous in film, and this is actually a good Jess Franco film. I actually really enjoy this one. Um, it's basically about world dominance man like this kind of dominatrix lesbian type thing who's trying to uh take over the world um and kind of damn all the all the males in the world and shit i think that's what the storyline is something is like something like that yeah 60s action orgy as bisexual supervillain sumutra <laughs> launches a diabolical plan to enslave the male species in her Army of Lusty Warrior Women. Yeah, man. It's, it's fucking fun. It actually has some pretty quirky moments and stuff in here. It, it feels different than a regular Jess Franco film for some odd reason. It's strange. Kind of like that one. Uh, then we got Going Under. Um, the unrated version. I... Yeah, this one right here, I think is like another Dominatrix S&M type film. I watched this a long time ago. I can't quite remember. I remember really not caring for it. I'm not a much into s and type stuff. Kind of freaks me out a little bit, to be honest. I won't lie, but not my thing going under. I can't really... I mean, I recommend if you guys are into that type of stuff, but I guess, but I'm not, so I couldn't get into it. Um, Grand Slam. Ugh, awesome, awesome heist film. Really, really good. One of the best heist movies. I actually agree. This is just fantastic, man. Really well acted. Shot. And it's got some, it's got some good, uh, good sequences in this film. Yeah. You guys like your heist films from 1969? Good stuff. Grand Slam. Check it out. Awesome. Speaking of great Euro crime films, Enzo G. Casarelli, The Heroin Busters, Fabio Testi, David Hemmings. Awesome. This one's got great action in it. Great story. But, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. The Heroin Busters, it's exactly what it is. You know, trying to take down this, the syndicate, Heroin Busters, fucking awesome. Love that film. Hell of the Living Dead, Bruno Matai, yes. The movie that has like 3,000 different names for it. Um, you know, the funny thing about this movie right here is that, you know, as poorly as it's made, because it's a Bruno Matai film, I mean, he still scores, you know, he has a whole pile of stock footage in his films. The idea isn't really that original, but it still holds a lot of social commentary. <laughs> it's actually quite interesting. It was still like a very social piece. Uh, yeah, and it, which is actually still kind of relevant today. It's it's pretty interesting. Um, I love this movie. It's just such a fantastic time. Um, but, you know, if you're looking for a well-made, you know, kind of zombie undead film, you know, probably stay clear, but 
It's so much fun. It's, I love it. Such a good one. Speaking of good films, we got uh, Hitchhike, where David Hess plays a, you know, basically the same character as he played in Last House on the Left. He plays that beautiful scumbag, as I like to refer to him as. Um, you know, uh, we got Frank O'Neill, Corinne Cleaver, uh, Cleary. They end up picking, they're on a road trip, they end up picking him up, and he fucks with them. It's, <laughs> you know, it's David S. Last House on the Left. Um, and, uh, Fuck. He's just such a fucking scumbag. I can't believe how many times he played this fucking scumbag. It's just, it blows my mind. Um, yeah, Last House on the Left and uh, House on the Edge of the Park. I mean, basically the same character also, but it takes awesome. Frank O'Neill. It's funny to see Frank O'Neill in a kind of a vulnerable role like this. You know, he's always playing kind of like the big, you know, hero or, you know, he's always playing the tough guy and shit, but he's a little bit vulnerable in this film. It's interesting to see that. I enjoy the shit out of Hitchhike. Uh, speaking of Franco Nero and How to Kill a Judge, it's a fucking awesome film right here. Another kind of uh, Euro type crime film. Action thriller, I guess, however you want to. But yeah. How to Kill a Judge. Uh, good action. Fulci, House by the Cemetery. Um, good stuff, man. Good stuff, good gore. Bob's dubbing is the best ever. <laughs> Poor guy, man. It's funny, man. If you get if you watch the uh, the Arrow Blu-ray features and stuff, they actually talk about the dubbing and shit. Because <laughs> such a bad rap, people are like, "Man, the kid's acting sucks." It's like he's fucking dubbed. Um, yeah. Third one in the Gates of Hell trilogy. I love it. Inferno, the sequel to Suspiria. I love this movie. The Blu-ray just looks phenomenal from uh, Arrow. Looks great. Uh, you know, I've never actually seen the Blu-ray for the Blue Underground one. I never picked it up, but Three Mothers, yeah, Inferno. We all know it. Uh, this is another great one, man. Kioma, Franco Nero, Spaghetti Western, so good, man. I love. I just so good, man. There's a lot of movies in here you can make for doubles and triple features, man. So one cool thing about Blue Underground is that they, they went all over the place, grabbed the smut, the horror, Euro crimes, the giallos, the westerns, and apparently almost kids' movies too. But yeah, Kioma, man, another really good one. Uh, then we got um, Justine Desaad, which I have actually yet to watch, so I can't actually comment on this one. Picked it up because it was Blue Underground. It was super cheap. And I think, you know, I grabbed, like, you know, some of the ones I was missing before, like, everything went out of print. So that was kind of a good thing. So I'll get around to it one day. Not the biggest Marquis de Sade fan, but just very sleazy stuff, man. Um, Anita Ekberg and Killer Nun. Anita Ekberg passed away but last year, year before. About a fucking insane nun. <laughs> it's the same. It's what it is. It's okay. It has its moments. It's not, like, the greatest exploitation film, but... I enjoy it though, you know, minorly. The Killing Hour, which I really like. This is a fantastic one from 1982. Yeah, very cool. Uh, later Giallo. So, yeah, I highly recommend The Killing Hour. Good stuff. Free. Cool story, man. And we got the Larry Cohen collection. Yes, fantastic stuff. We got Bone, God Told Me to Kill. And Q the Winged Serpent. Um, yeah, I won't pull these things out, but here's the movies. Q is just one of my favorite Larry Cohen films. I absolutely love that film. Actually, when I met Larry Cohen, I got him to sign my Screen Factory Blu-ray because I love that movie so much. Uh, God Told Me to Kill is um, very relevant even today, man. You know, all these sequence of events happen around the, these certain places where all these people start murdering and shit, and they all heard the voice that said, God told me to kill. Very... Awesome film. And then we got Bone, <laughs> which, man, I have to say, man, is just one of the most unique films ever. Um, if I can actually pull this out here. Try to get this thing out. With Yafit Kobo. Um, he basically plays a guy that kind of walks into this rich neighborhood and essentially takes these these two rich white folks by like hostage a little bit. And then he demands some things and then... It's a very, it's a very stubborn film. It's, it's comedic. It's odd. It has a lot of twists and turns. It doesn't turn out where you want or where you think it's going. It's brilliant. This is like one of the most unique films you could ever watch. It, 
That's all I'm going to say about it. you got to check out Bone. It's so fucking good, man. It's just amazing. Definitely nothing what you think it's what it's going to be like, but which is probably a good thing. Ooh, I was afraid that was going to happen. I wasn't going to get this in here. So, oh, I did. Got it in. Let's keep moving along here. Uh, let's get into La Scorta from 1992, 93 or something. 1993. Oh, man. High octane thriller. That's all I can say about this one, man. Winner of five Italian Oscars. Awesome. This movie, high octane, man. Really good shit, man. Um, yeah, here's the storyline. Yeah, it's a gangster film. Check out La Scorda. Awesome. Really good stuff. Probably one of the later releases from Blue Underground in the 90s. That's crazy. Uh, Let Sleeping Corpses Lie, um, also known as uh, The Dead at Manchester Morgue. Um, it's phenomenal. Really, really phenomenal. Um, atmospheric. I, you know, I love the, uh, the locations in this film. It's just, it's so awesome. It's kind of a slower paced film, but you know, it has its, uh, definitely has its moments, but cool zombie film. Spanish. Gotta love it. Uh, next up here we got William Defoe in The Loveless. This is a film that came out in the early 80s, and it's kind of a throwback piece to the 50s. He plays like a, a greasy biker, like kind of the head of this biker gang. This is a very unique film, man. Very, I mean, the casting in this film is perfect for William Defoe. He just fits this role so perfect. Um, got an interesting soundtrack to it. But yeah, there's a storyline to it. I recommend this one, man. It's another really good film. Another cool release by by Blue Underground. Probably would have never checked it out if it wasn't released by them, so. Um, but yeah. Well, I guess we should probably start picking up the pace. This video seems to be going on forever. All right, Lamberto Bava's Macabre. <laughs> Another film I've talked about many, many times, podcast, wherever it may be. <clears throat> kind of a slower piece, again, but, you know, I think it's worth it, the ride to get to the end, because it is the shock of a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Bother. Good stuff. Uh, Machine Gun McCain. Oh, this is another really good one, man. Uh, who directed this film? Oh, yeah, never mind. I was thinking it was somebody else, but yeah, another cool um, Italian gangster film. But good action in this one. Actually, the storyline's fantastic. Kind of a revenge film, I believe. Uh, I hope when McKean discovers, yeah, revenge film. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it. I couldn't remember the storyline, but I remember it being really awesome. Uh, Mad Dog Killer, man, Helmut Berger in this film, <laughs> plays. He's so fucking badass in this, man. It's ridiculous. Um, him and, like, a gang of people. I think they break out of jail, and he ends up, they go on this, like, killing spree type thing. Yeah, the psychotic spree of robbery, rape, uh, rape and revenge. Ends up fucking with Marissa Mel's character, and this cop starts going after him. It's just kind of one of those, uh, um, cops and robbers type stories. Really good shit, man. But he's just so vicious in this movie, man. Uh, this is actually a video nasty. A.K.A. the Beast with the Gun. Helmut Berger, man, should have won a fucking Academy Award for his performance in this. So good. Uh, another Lucio Fulci film, Manhattan Baby. This is probably one of his... I would say this is probably Fulci's worst film that he ever made. Which I always found very odd considering this movie came out right in the golden age of Fulci. You know, he made this a huge string of amazing films and right smack dead in the middle of that amazing streak of uh cinema madness was manhattan baby and it was such a miss it's just so bizarre that this movie came out of course we have again bob <laughs> uh but it it has an interesting you know story developing this one i just think it's not executed properly it does have a cool score though it's probably the best thing about the movie um Lustig's Maniac, of course, William Lustig owns Blue Underground. Um, yeah. One of my favorite movies of all time. Just one of many, many editions of this movie that I own. It's classic. Joe Spinell, amazing. What can I say? Psychological slasher, I guess. Menagea, Man Called Blade. Oh, man, this movie. This movie. I want to say, and now correct me if I'm wrong if you do know this, but I think this may have been the last Spaghetti Western ever made because if you look at the time that this was this came out in 1977 i mean spaghetti westerns are way past i believe this is one of the last if not the last spaghetti western to come out and it's too bad actually because this is actually a really good one 
another really good one. So, yeah, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Donnie, if you're watching this, let me know. Uh, Mark of the Devil. A film that I hated when I first watched, man. I watched this film years and years ago. I fucking hated this movie. Kind of a witch hunter type film with Udo Kier. Um, yeah, but the interesting thing, you know, this one has a history. I think this is another, you know, video nasty. Um, the movie that was so extreme that audience were given barf bags, free barf bags. Really? <laughs> like, that is, like, brilliant marketing right there. I mean, this movie is actually not that gross, and, I mean, there's way worse films, but it's great marketing, man. The first movie rated V for violence, totally uncut and uncensored. I like it, man. It's, it's, it is decent. It's still not one of my favorite ones, but I do like it. Marky DeSauz Justine. Uh, this one's all right, just Franco. Again, you know, Marky DeSauz stuff. It's very sexually explicit. <laughs> this one's got Klaus Kinski in it, so, you know, it's definitely worth watching for that Jack Palance. Um, yeah. Yeah, the cast in this is crazy, actually. Like, Klaus Kinski, man. Jack Palance doing a Jess Franco film. Um, but yeah, it's, it's okay. It's not bad for what it is. It's been a while. You know, I've really only watched those films, like, once. Then we got the, uh, fuck. The Manye Kanye collection. Mondo Kane, however you want to pronounce it. Everyone says it differently. These are, you know, the Mondo films from the 60s, like, real-life shit. Mondo Kane, 1 and 2, Women of the World. Uh... Africa Audio, the English version, Africa, Africa Audio, Audio Director's Cut, Goodbye Uncle Tom, uh, Audio is you Tom, and of course The Godfathers of Mondo. Uh, this is a really nice set, here's all the, the covers right here. And I think this one was limited to, I got number 186, I think it was limited to, I think someone told me 1,000, maybe 1,200, I don't know, it, it was very limited. This thing actually goes for ridiculous money, but yeah, they're Mondo films. If you don't know what they are, they're basically just kind of, yeah, they're like documentary style, you know, shooting real shit and stuff like that. Not for everybody. It's, you know, animal killings and a whole pile of just crazy world shit and stuff in there. Um, they're interesting though. They're, I have to say they are very interesting. So if you're curious, check them out. Uh, Mountain of the Cannibal God. Ursula Anders again, Stacy Keach, man, it's so awesome, man. I can't. Stacy Keach did a film with uh, Sergio Martino. Sergio Martino, another film that we, you know, covered on the uh, Italian Horror Month. Man, I, I every time I think of this movie, I always think of the scene where they finally get up to you know where the cannibals are, and the cannibals start eating those fucking those uh, snakes like alive oh man because they're really doing that shit and it's just like it's it fucking grosses me out every time but man Ursula Anders so sexy look at her man oh my god it's a fun film I enjoy it and we got the nesting uh supernatural slash film man it has been a while since I've seen this one man it's been so many years I should revisit this one I think when yeah this DVD came out in 2011 it's probably the last time I've seen it Probably, yeah, but I remember it being this one, this one being a little bit slow, not like a top shelf film, but it's okay. And here's one I actually have not watched it is Newsfront. This one's actually still sealed. I think I've had this one for years in the collection. Probably the last time I even did my Blue Underground collection, it was obviously in there, still sealed. But shame on me for not seeing it yet. Um, which is kind of funny, actually, because it's an Aussie film that, you know, and I, you guys follow me, you know that I love my Aussie cinema, but. Smurf Falchi and New York Ripper. This is one that I really f <laughs> should have grabbed on Blu-ray before it went out of print, but uh, I love this movie. I've seen this movie like a hundred times. It's just so sleazy and awesome. Killer quacks like a duck. I mean, it's got great gore. The soundtrack's amazing. I mean, everything about this movie is awesome. How do you not like the New York Ripper? It's awesome shit. Uh, Umberto Lindsay's Nightmare City, another one I just absolutely love, man. There's just, the soundtrack's amazing. Zombies look like shit, but they're awesome. Um, yeah, great locations. I think Umberto Lindsay did a great job with this film. Another one that I have on Blu-ray. Keep the DVD. That cover art's kind of kind of gaudy though. Uh, Night Train Murders. I always say that I prefer this to Last House on the Left, and I'm sticking with it. I like the setting a lot better. I just think this one is a little bit better made. You know, it doesn't have a stupid soundtrack. 
sorry if I'm offending you, but was released as the second house on the left. The house on the left and torture train. Yeah, this one's fucking sadistic, man. It, it's just if you really look at the characters and and the motivations and stuff and and how the female gets involved, it's just a sick fucking movie, man. Great stuff though. Love Night Train Murders. Argento's Opera, which is another film that's getting a Blu-ray release very, very soon here, which I'm excited about because I love opera. It's great. Uh, I just showed off the opera. Um, this edition, which is very, very cool. That one has the soundtrack, but yeah, this one wasn't really much more to write home about. I think it's the same features ported over because, of course, William Lustig, who used to uh, be part of Blue or um, Anchor Bay, started up Blue Underground. So that's why you see a lot of the same films released. But yeah, no, this is a good one, man. Very, very good stuff. You know, it's got some eye shit in that film that just drives me nuts. Uh, the Prowler, man, directed by Joseph Zito. Yep, good stuff. I always like Savini's uh, effects in this one. A lot of people shit on this film. I don't know why people shit on The Prowler. I think it's actually a really good slasher film. I, I don't understand the hate for this one, man. I like the story... Um, yeah, dude, I, I don't know. Prowler's good. It's good stuff. The Pajama Girl Case. Uh, good stuff, man. This is actually kind of an interesting film. Um, I know my man Derek actually did a review for this. So, maybe check out his review. I've never reviewed this one before. I've seen this one a few years back. I actually honestly can't remember this one that well, man. But, yeah. So, go check out his review. Uh, double feature, Jess Franco, Two Undercover Angels, and Kiss Me Monsters. <laughs> These movies are fucking bizarre. Really, really bizarre oddities. Oh my god, these are so strange. Yeah, a psychedelic ass, acid jazz wig out. That actually describes it pretty well, man. These are fucking weird ones. Actually, two pretty decent films by Jess Franco, to be honest. But... You know, they are Jess Franco films at, at heart, so. Brutamatize Rats, Night of Terror, post-apocalyptic killer rat film, can't go wrong. Amazing soundtrack. They kill a lot of rats in this film. <laughs> they really do kill a lot of rats. I love that shit, though. Uh, Revolver with Oliver Reed and Fabio Testi. I wonder if all, all, Oliver Reed was shit-faced in, in the making of this film. Mm, early 70s? I don't know if he had become that guy yet, but... Yeah... This is, I love Revolver. Action packed it is. Great cast, man. Fabio Tessie, Oliver Reed. Can't go wrong with that shit. Good stuff. Man Run, Man, oh my God, what am I fucking dyslexic? Run, Man Run, uh, Thomas Milan. Such a good one. Very violent um, spaghetti western. I like this one. It's good shit. Here's the storyline. Spaghetti Western classic. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, God. Jess Franco's Sado Mania. <laughs> Another Women in Prison film. Uh, yeah, you know what you're getting yourself into with this one, man. I actually kind of like this one. This one's vile. It's fucking vile. Um, but the name says it all, though, man. Sado Mania. You know what you're getting yourself into. Come on. Give me a break. Uh, Saloon Kitty uh, from the director Caligula. That's pretty cool. Helmut Burger's also in this one. This is a pretty interesting one. Takes place in World War II, which is actually pretty damn cool. Because this is uh, from 75, doing kind of a period piece. But here's the storyline. Um, it's a little bit slower, from what I remember. Very, very long. 133 minutes. Fuck, I don't remember being that long, but... Look at that ass. Read on the cover. I'm probably going to get flagged for that now fucking YouTube. Uh, Seven Deaths in the Cat's Eye. Great Giallo. Got the 88 Blu-ray of this one, too. Um, this is actually one that, you know, when I first watched, I didn't really care for. I think maybe I watched it, like, not with the full mind frame, but this one's very, very atmospheric, man. Love the setting and the castle. Great stuff. Uh, Shockwaves. Ooh, Nazi Zombies. Terrible. It, this movie's, like, really poorly made, but... It's so much fun, though. I mean, these shits coming out of the water, and I always love that scene, man. They come out of the come out of the water. It's fucking awesome. They rise out, and it's pretty cool. Um, this one actually has Blu-ray release. I can't even believe that they even put this on Blu-ray because this movie just there's like no good prints left of it. So 
Um, it's very, uh, very grainy and very damaged. And they put this on Blu-ray and it just looks like shit apparently, so obviously never grabbed it, but Shockwaves nevertheless, still a fun film. Uh, the Shape of Things to Come. Oh, this is this is a pretty interesting one too. H.G. Wells story about, you know, humans living on I think the moon, right? Yeah, no, yeah, it is. And then Jack Palance kind of plays a dictator who's taking over. He wants to take over like New Washington and stuff, and they gotta defend against him. So, kind of an interesting film. Uh, 1979, rated PG. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen this one. Yeah, Jack Palance, John Ireland. Yeah, good stuff. And then we got uh, Mario Bava's last film before he passed away. Actually, I think Mario Bava only directed about half this movie or something like that. I know Lamberto Bava, I believe, finished directing this movie for him. Because Bava got really sick, his father got sick, so also known as uh, Beyond the Door Part 2, Supernatural, kind of ghostly. Um, good stuff though, man. I like Shock. That one kind of gets shit on, but still, decent film. Short Night of Glass Dolls, awesome fucking giallo, man. This one has such a unique idea to it. Don't want to give it away, but, you know, here's the premise to it. Barbara Box also in this one, for one of my favorite Bond movies. Um, yeah, very, very unique in style and, and uh, execution in this one. Blu-ray looks great from 88. Uh, then we got The Smithereens, a second one in here I still have yet to watch. I don't know why I don't watch this. But I've been told by many people to check this out. And I just buy too many movies, I guess, and just can't check them all out. But I have not seen this one yet, so I can't comment. Uh, then we got Snuff. Very cool packaging on this, limited to 5,000. Of a video nasty that is fucking horrible. This is a terrible film. <laughs> it actually releases on fucking Blu-ray too, I believe. Um, <laughs> it's so bad. This movie sucks. It's it's a snuff. It's supposed to be like a real snuff film, but it's just not. It's terrible. It's like legitimately bad. It's so bad. It's actually bad. Mikel Suave's Stage Fright. Um, some call it a giallo. Some call it a slasher. What do you guys call it? Um, I love this movie, man. Great, great soundtrack. Use the, the theme for this many, many times in videos and stuff, but got cool kills. Love the location. I love the setting. This film is awesome. Trapped in this playhouse and the owl killer starts taking him out. Good shit, man. Stage fright. Uh, Dario Gentle Stendhal Syndrome from 1996. Uh, this is one right here that I am not like... Overly the hugest fan of, um, my boy JP loves this movie, and it actually made his top 10 to 96, which you would think that an Argento film would, but it actually didn't. I don't know, man. The more I watch this film, the less I like it. I think this one suffers from being too long. I think he probably should have edited this one down a little bit. I feel like it drags in a lot of parts. I mean, this one runs two hours. I like the premise. The send -all syndrome is a cool idea, um, you know, with his daughter, Aja Argento, and... But I just, I feel like it's too long. I feel like it could have been tightened up and the pacing is off to me. So, uh, Enzo, Enzo Z. Casarelli's Street Law, Franco Nero, Barbara Bach. Fucking love this movie. Euro Crime, great action. Oh man, so good. Here's a storyline. See, all these movies, they just keep being repeated, you know? Django, Black Belly of the Tarantula. Awesome. Love Street Law. Good stuff. Plays up. He's so badass in that film, man. He's so tough. Uh, Strip Nude for Your Killer <laughs> from Andre Bianchi. We just uh, covered these ones. Did a Bianchi director spotlight on the Italian month. And it's fantastic, man. It's just sleazy, sleazy goodness, man. A lot of muff. Some of the biggest 70s muffs you'll ever see are in this movie, man. Trust me. It's good shit, man. It's got some pretty interesting kills. Ultra trashy fun. That's the best way to sum it up. It's good shit. Love it. And then we got Jess Franco's Succubus. Yes, it is about a succubus. I actually like this film. Very, very trashy. But uh, it's a little bit slower too, actually, from what I remember. And it's only 79 minutes. Holy fuck, is it really? that? That's not good. If it's slow, it's 79 minutes. But there's the uh, synopsis. But yeah, succubus. It's actually not too bad. Uh, or Gentle Suspiria. Um, you know, I, I'm still waiting for the Synapse, uh, you know, standard edition of the Blu-ray. I'm not grabbing that steelbook, but I do have this on Blu-ray somewhere. 
one of the UK releases, but transfer's not the greatest, but say, I'll wait it out. You know, I'm not, I'm in no rush. I own the film many, many times, but it's classic shit, man. Very, very beautiful stuff. Fuck the haters. Fuck you, Zach. Uh, Texas Adios, Franco Nero. I mean, it is what it is, man. Spaghetti Western, good shit. I love this one. You know, you cannot ever go wrong with Franco Nero in a film, I swear. Everything that he's in is good. Toolbox Murders with Cameron Mitchell, one of my favorites. I absolutely love this movie. You know, it's kind of like two movies in one, in a sense. It's pretty interesting. Cameron Mitchell is just fucking... But yeah. Toolbox Murders, we all know about that one. The sequel is garbage. Or the remake is garbage by Toby Hooper. Uh, Torso, Sergio Martino. Yes, amazing. One of my favorites. Such a such an amazingly executed film. Great kills. Cinematography, soundtrack. Oh, beautiful women. Can't go wrong with this, man. Susie Kendall. Oh, I love her. Susie Kendall's amazing. Then we got uh, Two Evil Eyes, George Romero, Argento, um, doing two different films. Romero's The Facts in the Case of Mr. Valdemar. And, of course, uh, Argento does The Black Cat. Um, you know... Edgar Allan Poe stories. It's not bad. Neither one are mind-blowing in this. But it's okay. William Lustig's Uncle Sam. Man, I really do not like this movie. This movie sucks. 1996. Trash. The story is so fucking stupid. and It's just executed so bad. I'm sure William Lustig does not care for this movie himself. <laughs> He's done better movies, man. I don't know. I'm just not a fan of that one. It's irritating. Uh, Vampires, but I do like this movie, man, from Jose Ramon Lardes, uh, directed Symptoms, actually, which is a fantastic film, which I'll get to way up in here, in the Mondo section, but, uh, this, you know, lesbian vampirism type shit, but it, it's just so atmospheric, and the setting is amazing, it's got great score, it's very ominous, I love this movie, it's great, very sexual charged, as, as a vampire film kind of should be. Venom, yes. Look at this cast. So stupid. Susan George, Oliver Reed, man. Klaus Kinski in a killer snake film. That's right. Another one that's made its way to Blu-ray. Did not pick up. But, um, yeah, it is a fun one. Good shit. Sorry about the fucking chair. That's just very amateur. <laughs> Venus and Furs. Another Jess Franco film. Wow. I, I truly own about 75 Jess Franco films. It's like really kind of wrong, I guess. Klaus Kinski, Venus and Furs. This is actually an excellent Jess Franco film. Very well acted and done and shot. This is kind of before, this is about the time when he was starting to get very uh, sleazy and shit though. It's 69. You know, Jess Franco's films in the 60s were a little bit different than his later stuff. So, Venus and Furs, I like it. It's good. William Lustig's Vigilante fucking writes. So good. So good revenge film. Robert Foster, Fred Williamson. You cannot go wrong. You kill one of them, they're coming after you, motherfuckers. Love this movie. It's so good. This is one that I fucked up and should have got on Blu-ray. Should have upgraded, but I didn't. Stupid. Uh, Charles Bronson in Violent City, of course. It's like a revenge film. <laughs> I, Charles Bronson did so many revenge films. It's kind of what he was known for, but this is a fun one, though, man. You know, it's, it's no uh, Death Wish Part 3, but... Um, it's still a good one, though. I mean, it is what it is, right? Charles Bronson. Uh, Aldo Lado's uh, Who Saw Her Die. George Lansby, the one-time Bond. Anita Streisberg. Yep. This one, I actually did not care for the first time I watched it. I have come around on it. It's actually quite well done. I think, I think what my problem was, I think it was a little bit... I can't remember if it was predictable or what my problem was with it, but... It's still, nevertheless, it's a good film. Uh, Jess Franco, Women Behind Bars. Oh my god, what is this one about? Um, <laughs> yes, this is another prison, women in prison film. Of course it is. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, women of the World, this is actually in the box set, but I found this one for like dirt ass cheap, so I just grabbed another copy of it. Uh, documentary. Um, I think Women of the World's in the Monte I think it is, or maybe I'm tripping balls, maybe it's not. Uh, 
but yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting documentary about women and their roles in different cultures around the world and shit. Um, using outtakes from Monica. Maybe it is actually. Yeah, okay. I'm having a brain fart right now. But yeah, it's kind of an interesting uh, premise. Kind of cool. Very interesting. And of course, last up for the DVDs here, we've got Fulci Zombie. Love the cover. Fantastic film. Classic. I mean, what, what else can I say, man? Zombie vs. Shark, right? Yeah, one of my favorites. Too many editions of it. All right, so getting into the Blu-rays here. Uh, we left off with Zombie DVD and into Zombie Blu-ray, uh, which is, this is just a single um, DV, or single uh, disc release. I actually ordered the double disc and I got this one, but so that, that kind of pissed me off. But uh, I always intended on grabbing the double disc one, but I never did after. Uh, Maniac Cop 2. Yes. It's fucking awesome shit, man. William Lustig, uh, written by Larry Cohen, I believe. Did Larry Cohen write the second one? Yes, he did. He wrote all three, I believe. Uh, I prefer Maniac Cop 2 to part one. It's good. Robert Czar, rest in peace. Good shit, man. Good shit. And then the not-so-great Maniac Cop 3, Badge of Silence. This one, I think... That, I think... Um, Larry Cohen even like rewrote this film a bunch of times. There's like production problems with it. There was script issues. It kind of shows in the in the in this cut or in the final product. But you know, it says this is like the unrated version. I have no idea what's different from the unrated to this theatrical. So if anyone knows, let me know out there. I honestly don't know. Um, I just I don't know. I can't remember. Maniac on Blu-ray single disc version. Um, you know, it does have a fair amount of features features for the single disc. And then, of course, we've got the 30th anniversary, so we've seen Maniac three times in this collection. Um, but yeah, this one's awesome. It's got the, you know, the documentaries and all the goodness on here, man. All the shit you want to know about Maniac and Joe Spinell and William Lustig. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, here's The Living Dead of Manchester Morgue. Showed the DVD off, Let Sleeping Corpses Lie. Picked up on Blu-ray because I love this movie. And the Blu-ray looks phenomenal. It, it really does do it justice, man. It's awesome. So, another one of my favorite zombie films of all time. Gotta check it out. Then we've got uh, Diab <laughs> Diabolical Bizarre <laughs> Sadistic. This is, you know... It's funny. Both these films are about women trying to, like, take over and oppress the man. <laughs> we talked about the girl from Rio earlier. Uh, the Million Eyes of Sue Maru? Maru? Um, yeah, so here's the storyline of this one. <laughs> Good shit, man. Good shit. And then I picked up this one here for Five Golden Dragons, because I already had Circus of Fear on DVD, but Five Golden Dragons, which I've actually yet to watch. So, I need to check this one out. Um, but yeah, it's got like... Claus Kinski in it. It's pretty cool. So I need to check that one out. My homeboy Derek sent me over Fire and Ice. Thank you once again, Derek. This is just a phenomenal release. Love this animated film. Fire and Ice. This is like my favorite anim animation. I, I love this, you know, early 80s stuff. What year did this movie come out in? 7.1 they put this in. 1983, it totally makes sense. Yeah. But this is awesome. Awesome. Uh, Love Camp 7, Nazi exploitation. This is such a shitty movie, but, you know, I like it. I, I'm a big fan of Nazi exploitation. I don't know. I just find that the movies to be mostly terrible, but entertaining. I don't know what it is, man. I, I, I've just, I've always been obsessed with Nazis. I know that sounds bad, but I meant the history of them and just, they were interesting. But, um... Love Camp 7, man. Oh, another video nasty. Then we got The Lift. Uh, Dick Moss. Um, you know, it, it, it's a fun premise. This one's a, it drags a little bit, in my opinion. I think it's a little bit too long. It's got some fun effects and stuff. I, You know, Killer Elevator, man. Like, you can't go wrong with that, right? So. But, uh, yeah. And then we got the remake. Down. Also known as The Shaft with uh, Naomi Watts. I actually prefer this one a little bit more. I think it's it's a little bit of pace, even though it runs longer. But it's got some fun kills, soundtrack, Love in an Elevator. Yeah, <laughs> can't go wrong. It's, I think it's a joke between me and Derek now, man. Uh, Love in an Elevator. Um, so It's just like so perfect for a film like this. But there's one kill in this film that it, it literally floored me. So fucking funny. 
this dude gets sucked into an elevator and thrown out this building. Just the way it happens, it's just, it's so funny. It's so funny, but yeah, down. And we've got Death Dream. Yes, Bob Clark's film that we already talked about. Yeah, good stuff right there. Lots of features. I gotta compare these, actually. I don't think the DVD has that much on there, but yeah, such an amazing film, so... But yeah, so that is going to do it for the Blue Underground Collection. Holy shit balls! that video was really, really long. I knew it was going to be, that's why I wanted to do it by itself. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, yeah, as you can see, I did not upgrade a lot of the DVDs to Blu-ray. I just, you know, I, I don't upgrade everything. I just upgrade the ones that I want to. Didn't own those, so that was very cool. But uh, yeah, man, so that is going to do it for Shelf 22. I guess we'll come back and do, like, the TV stuff, I guess. I guess we'll just do the TV, and then we'll get into, like, the Godzilla ghost house and, like, unearthed films and stuff. I guess we'll do it like that. Um, I still have the DVD box sets to go through, which I might move around because, as you guys can see, I've, I've put my Vinegar Syndrome stuff up there, which doesn't even fit anymore because I have so much more to put up there. So I still got to do some organization. I'm leaving for Vegas tomorrow so whenever you're watching this i might be there i don't know but check you guys later anyways in the next video and as usual boo!